Ladies and gentlemen, as they work their way off of turn number three and four, the 43rd salute to the troops, 150 is green. Working up into turn number one and two for the first time. Matt Williamson has the lead. They're three wide back there for spot number six. Mike Mahaney making the move to the inside of Mark Johnson and Tim Sears Jr. as they work through turn number three and four for the first time. But you can score lap number one to the six of Money Matt. And Dalton Slack right there to the two spot. Eric Rudolph, Matt Shepard, Mike Mahaney. That's the early top. Oh, Max McLaughlin up and over and over. Almost out of the ballpark in turn number one. Red lights are on immediately. And Max is out of the car, standing up, and let's give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Mike, that was a vicious uh, incident there in turn number one. Definitely a tough break for the driver of the 8H machine, and he was a guy a couple of days ago was really showing some strong runs on the outside, and unfortunately his day going to end early here in the Sleuth of the Troops 150. And he was second in this race a year ago, too, and had... Had some strong runs in a small block leading up to this race uh, last year, winning at Weed Sport and second at Brewerton, second in this race. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen today, but uh, nothing he could do. Matt Williamson choosing the outside once again as they work through turn number three and four. We're back to green with Williamson at the point. Williamson uses that outside lane. He goes to the point as Dalton Slack. Back to the two spot once again. Rudolph, Shepard, Mahaney, the top five as they try to string out down the back straight away behind them. Derek Webb and Mark Johnson going after one another. Johnson down low. Derek Webb up on the top side. Give it to Johnson off the corner, but Williamson pulling away by three car lengths. Williamson with the lead as we got a battle for the number four spot. Mike Mahaney looking to the inside of Matt Shepard as they go through turn number one and two. Shepard found something on the top side, though, that time as they battle down the back stretch. Meanwhile, car slowing up in turn number two. That is the 18 of Brad Rouse as he will come to a stop just in front of the Matt Shepard side in turn two, and that'll bring yellow out onto the speedway for the second time. The outside line, the dominant lane, green lights are back on. Williamson gets the lead, and just like you called it, Mike, Matt Shepard to that outside lane. He'll get by for second and close in on Williamson already for the lead. Matt Shepard all over the back bumper of the number six car as they head down into turn number three and four. Williamson right now might be a little better. Shepard on the bottom, though, looking to keep pace with them as they come by and click off another lap. Slacks Still third, Rudolph fourth, Mark Johnson rounding out your top five. As they head up into turn, number one and two, Tim Sears Jr. caught in an outside lane as Stuart Friesen gets on through. In the meantime, top five start to stretch out just a little bit, a top two breakaway at the front of the field. Everybody kind of settling into a groove right now, just trying to get some laps clicked off here, and Williamson and Shepard are doing just that as we work lap number 12. Yellow flag out on the speedway, 22 laps complete, and the salute to the troops, 150. Matt Matt on the front row. Two Titans, that is for sure. Matt Williamson is the leader. He has choice of starting lane, and he'll go from the top of the VP Racing Fuels making power point. Green lights back on. Williamson and Shepard side by side at a one. Oh, and Mahaney high sides the car. Almost, he does smack the boilerplate in turn number one. Yellow lights are going to be back on. Take a look at the replay as you see Mahaney going up into the turn one wall in that George Hudding owned Adirondack Auto number 35 machine as the 35 going to come down pit road. Williamson gets a good launch this time off the turn, and Williamson might return the favor. It does so into turn number one. What a start, Matt Williamson back to the point. A start that Matt Williamson needed as he reclaims the top spot down the back straight away. Shepard sits up into that number two spot, then it's Dalton Slack in third. Mark Johnson making a move down to the inside. He's going to get a two-for-one special hip checks. Dalton Slack out of the way in turn number four. Mark Johnson goes to the number three spot. And Dalton Slack now may be in danger of losing that position to Eric Rudolph, but again, Rudolph not able to get up off the corner like Dalton Slack is able to. He'll reclaim fourth. Rudolph back to fifth as they click off lap number 35, this time by Anthony Perego and Stuart Friesen. Friesen about another lane or so up on the outside portion of the racetrack, fighting with Tim McCready for position as they work it down the back straightaway. Here's the boo for the number four spot as Anthony Perego, he got by Rudolph. He's not going to stop there. He'll get by Dalton Slack as they go through turn number three and foot four. New fourth place man give it to car number four Anthony Perego takes the spot and now he's going to look to set his sights on Mark Johnson he's, he goes back to the bottom of the racetrack 
As they work down the back straightaway, Matt Williamson still well in control. Five to six car length advantage. That battle for third has been a real good one here in the early laps as Johnson and Perego are having a war for that position right now. They work down the front straightaway. Perego going to get by Mark Johnson. He'll be your new third place man. He'll try to go to work, but now Perego drifts up to the top side, allows Johnson to come back, but we talked about the exit of the corner. Perego better off turn number two, and now he's going to set his sights on one of his good friends, Matt Shepard, ahead of him. And Matt Shepard was wearing an Anthony Perego hoodie earlier this week I watched, and now he's going to have Anthony Perego right to his back bumper as they click off lap number 56 into turn number one. Perego right up on the top side once again. You see Shepard, he drifts out as soon as they come down the front straightaway. That time Perego caught it. He's going to go wheel to wheel with him up into turn number one and two. Oh, but Perego caught the inside jersey barrier. That allows Johnson to come back on the bottom. Perego going to hold the spot, though. He had Matt Shepard as a sitting duck that time in turn number one and two, but caught the barrier, and that negated the pass. Yeah, he caught that inside barrier, and that's what we have talked about. Even last year, those inside jersey barriers can definitely do some damage on the left front. Thankfully, it looks like right now the Perego number four has no left front issues. He is not done, though. He's going back after Shepard down the back straightaway. Look at that run he gets off the top side, Mike. He continues it down into turn number three and four. He knows Shepard likes to drift up. Does he pull to the inside and try to make a move once again? That time, nope, he's going to try, just drive right around him. Anthony Perego, your new second place man, and he might be the best car on the racetrack, but he's already about a half a straightaway behind Matt Williamson as the six continues to drive away. As Perego goes to the outside lane to try to get a run off the top, trying to get by Mike Mahaney at least down into turn number three, and he'll try to go after Williamson. He's going to look at a pull even turns with him as they click off lap number 66. Looks like Perego to the point. Anthony Perego. Perego with a sweeping move on the outside has taken the race lead away as he goes to the front with 66 in the books. Williamson back to second. Yep, lap 100 is the competition caution as, oh, Alex Payne off the pace on the front straightaway. The Nardozzi paving and construction ride. Yellow lights are on at lap 72. Anthony Perego on the gas of the BP Racing Fuels making PowerPoint. Farney turns them loose and we're back underway. Another great restart for Anthony Perego. Stewart Friesen and Mark Johnson just split Matt Shepard through turn number one and two. Friesen will take the third spot away. Johnson sits back there in fourth. So you may have mentioned something on the handling of the 9S of Matt Shepard. He drops back two positions, and now he's under fire from the 3RS at Dalton Slack. Meanwhile, Williamson takes a look to the inside of Perego, but it's going to be Perego holding on as we click off lap number 78. 78 up on the leaderboard, and it looks like that handling on the Shepard car, looks like that car is tightened up big time on him as Dalton Slack and Darren Smith are all over him. Darren Smith looking for a top five run here as he works to the inside, can't get it done. The door was shut when he got there. Watch Dalton Slack try to go to the high lane now. Keep an eye on Dalton Slack on his restart as he goes around the top of both Mark Johnson and Stuart Friesen. Dalton Slack up to the three spot. What a drive by the driver of the Adam Well in Ontario. Friesen going to come right back on the inside lane, but Slack going to keep it locked up on the top. And Dalton Slack in that number three car goes back to the number three spot. Every position matters, though, because you don't know what spot in the line you're going to be in when you come back out after that competition yellow. Yellow flag is out onto the speedway on lap number 95. And, Timmy, this could signal the competition yellow. So drivers coming down pit road. Jimmy Phelps staying out on the racetrack for now. Chaotic scenes down here. Crews are trying to figure out if they can go or not. Now the whistles have been blown and crews have the ability to work on the race car. This is best case scenario for yeah. all the guys that came in because only two drivers stayed out. The Baldwinsville Bandit, Jimmy Phelps, your race leader, and what a start he gets over Calabrese as they head to one. 43 laps to go as they go into turn number one and two, but guess who? Anthony Perego to the inside, going to go wheel to wheel with Jimmy Phelps off turn number two. As they race down the back straightaway, Perego makes the move. He's going to take the race lead away past the 98H. Anthony Perego going to the front. And I tell you what, Matt Williamson said he was hoping to get to the back bumper of Perego and trying to challenge him for the lead. If he wants to get there, he's got to go now. And the first step is getting around Stuart Friesen, trying to do just that. Don't think it's going to happen this time. And actually, it does. Up off the corner, Friesen not able to get that momentum like he wanted. 
Williamson sees the daylight, he'll nose out back ahead for that number two spot. And Williamson's going towards the front now. He's cleared Jimmy Phelps, who I don't think has the car to go up on that outside lane. And you see that the car gets way out of shape on him, but open the door for Friesen to close the gap here as we work lap 110. Mark Johnson trying to take him three wide off turn number two, not able to do it. Is Phelps going to hold on to the position and get, actually, he'll get back by Stuart Friesen now and move into that number three spot as they go down into turn number three and four. Field works its way off the corner. Matt Shepard up into the wall. He'll drop a couple of positions as they come by. Lap number 126 complete. Perego, your leader. Every lap, it looks like Williamson is just a tick better as they go through one and two, but it's in turn number four where Perego's able to keep that advantage. However, this may change soon as they start to approach traffic. Williamson with a big move to the inside, almost wheel to wheel as they cross the flag stand. Got the run up off the corner like he wanted, but he missed the bottom in turns one and two. That opens the door for Perego to scoot away by a car length. That's exactly what Anthony Perego wanted to see happen. Williamson not able to show the wheels and, and give Anthony, Anthony Perego any advantage up off of turn number three and four. Back to the line this time by 134 in the record books. They both look go side by side. Williamson with his best look yet as they go down the front straightaway, but the four-star car gets a little too high that time. Williamson goes back to the lead off turn number two. But can Perego keep his momentum rolling down the back straightaway? Into turn number three and four they go. As it looks like Perego got way too high in turn number one and two. He'll try to carry it through three and four. Not able to do it. Matt Williamson back at the front. 15 laps to go for the driver to St. Catharines, Ontario. The Gage Long Care and Landscaping car number 215 going to come to a slow pace in turns one and two. Green lights are on. Williamson gets away by two car lengths. Williamson gets a good jump going into turn number one and two. Perego quickly going to go back to the top side, but he opens the door for Mark Johnson off turn two. They're wheel to wheel as they head down the back straightaway. Meanwhile, Matt Shepard sneaks back into the top six as he gets by Stuart Friesen as they go down into turn number three and four. Williamson will click off the lap. Still a battle per second, but Perego holds on to the position with Johnson in tow. Yellow flag out on the speedway with just five laps to go. Pace truck going to pull its way into the infield. Matt Williamson, your race leader. Anthony Perego in second. Green, white, checkered. We're back underway. Who will win the salute to the troops? 150. They'll bring him up into turn number one and two. Williamson going to go straight to the top. Perego opens the door for Mark Johnson one more time off turn number two. They're wheel to wheel for second. That's going to allow Williamson to get away. They'll dive down into turn number three and four. Williamson keeps it on the bottom as they'll bring him through turn four this time. He'll drift out a little bit. White flag out onto the speedway. Tim Baltz take us home. Final time into turn number one and two. Matt Williamson, St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. Works it off a of turn number three, one and two and down the back straightaway. Five car length advantage. He's won 28 races this season. He's never won the Salute to the Troops 150 until now. Ladies and gentlemen, the 43rd Salute to the Troops 150 belongs to Matt Williamson. Yeah, what a racetrack. I mean, racetrack like that, it, uh, it don't matter where you start. I mean, luckily we started up front, but um, when Anthony got back around me, you know, it probably let me search around a little bit. I got um, I got worried about protecting the bottom, and he showed me the top, and then I just started floating the middle down there, you know, sliding up out of the bumps, and um, was really good. So, first and foremost, I got to thank uh, Paul Went, Pete Coco, Johnny Coco, the whole um, Coco Wentz team. Um, give me a bullet all year. I mean, this uh, this car is really good. Um, you know, S and W Service Center supplied a motor for this week. I really got to thank Wayne Kahn for that. Um, Ibach. Uh, come on board this year, you know, without them we wouldn't be able to do it. Unfortunately, we've got to race a big block race next. I got this nice Eibach fire suit we don't get to wear in Victory Lane, but uh, I'm sure they'll deal with it. The car got a lot of photography today. Um, you know, Mark Cerrone, uh, Lons Unlimited, Integra Shocks, Military Towing, um, the whole the whole team that makes it happen. Billy the Kid, um, you know, it's just a total team effort. Yeah, me and Jeff had a communication system. He's usually, you know, up in the grandstands, you know, telling me, hey, you need to go high. You need to go low. This year we didn't have radios, so we had a communication system that if I put my hand up on the roll bar, uh, thank you, roll bar on the yellow tape, it was tight. If I put it on the orange tape, it was loose. Um, so I was trying to, you know, tell him, hey, we do need to make changes. And then um, luckily we were leading, so we got a couple minutes to actually talk before all the cars got stopped on pit road. And um, we decided to change the right rear, change the right front, and um, leave some other stuff alone. And the car was really good.